Welcome to this episode of the Shared Security Podcast. And joining me as my special guest here in Las Vegas, hot Las Vegas, by the way, it's 110 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't even know what that is in Celsius, but that's like really hot. <laughs> but I'm here with my special guest, Shadia, who is a principal software engineer at SquareX. Welcome. Hi, Tom. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Yeah, great to have you uh, on the podcast. So uh, for those of you that don't know, this is the third episode in my series with SquareX. So uh, in the first episode, we talked to Vivek, who's the founder of SquareX. And in the second uh, episode, we talked to Jeswin, who is also with SquareX and is actually giving a talk with uh, Vivek at DEF CON this weekend, which is really exciting. If you're at DEF CON or if you were at DEF CON, because this is released after DEF CON, make sure you watch the recording of that for sure. But for you, I wanted to ask, what do you think of Black Hat so far? How's I mean, it been going? Yeah, it's been great. You know, even in the starting first few hours, a lot of people were like coming in in the business area, even though the briefings were going on. And that sort of, sort of, you know, showed that how much hunger they have to know, like what's all there, you know, what kind of solutions are there, uh, you know, how, how they can better secure their organization. So it's been quite buzzing uh, at the booth and around the whole business hall as well. Yeah. Is there any kind of highlights for you that you've had so far? I mean, for me, I think the biggest highlights were the conversations I was having at the booth. So, you know, a, a lot of people were coming in from different backgrounds. You know, there were people who were working with the government. There were people who were working with some organizations. There were people who were, you know, just starting their career in cybersecurity. And then there were people, you know, who were... Uh, we're just exploring like, you know, whether there can be something like browser security as well. Yeah. So there's a huge different, uh, you know, there were, there were a huge uh, crowd that was coming in and there were people who who knew about browser security. There were people who didn't know about it. So, it, it, so you know, uh, the conversations were quite interesting. That, that I would say would be my highlights. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Is there a theme that you're seeing this year? So you spent some time in the, the expo hall and yes. it's probably a, maybe a little overwhelming with all the vendors that you see. <laughs> yes. Just every, pretty much every aspect of cybersecurity is represented. Yes, is yes. there a theme that you see this year yeah, on the so, floor? So I would say like, you know, uh, moreover, I'm seeing like three things to be quite common, like which is being projected like in the business hall. So first is like, of course, you know, the protection against like AI based threats. Uh, that mm -hmm. is something which I'm seeing as a common theme in the business hall. Like a lot of, you know, companies are coming in with solutions around that. Then compliance, which is like, you know, always a problem that has been there with organizations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like a lot of companies doing compliance. And, uh, you, know, you know, third, I would say that there are companies who are specifically, uh, you know, uh, working around like cloud security. That is also mm. something which is like a common theme there. Yeah, it's interesting. I was at, were you at RSA at all? Yes. Yeah, so you remember RSA was yes. like AI, everything. It seemed like every vendor had something in their marketing about AI and how our product uses AI. And I think it's debatable whether, <laughs> sure. was it really pure AI or is it just adding on to a product? Right. Do you think, I'd like to hear your opinion on, on AI. And do you think this is going to be a, a game changer? I think it's a game changer. Uh, there are many things which you can actually uh, complement, I would say, or, you know, speed things up by using AI. Uh, detection based on AI is something which is still in progress because detection itself is a very probabilistic thing. Mm -hmm. You know, no one can say like, you know, oh, this is something really like, you know, wrong or this is something very correct. So, of course, where there's some probabilis probability involved, uh, you know, that that's some place people are experimenting AI with. But there can be some other use cases as well, like, you know, a uh, lot of GPT-based applications are out there now, uh, and people are also using them in their security products as well. So um, that's that's something quite interesting, you know, like how people can communicate with the with different solutions by natural mm -hmm. language. And that's something where I would say like AI yeah, can complement right now quite well. Now on Friday, I know Jeswin and Vivek are doing a talk at, at DEF CON, yeah. and yeah. it's around SWGs, and yes. there's this new attack that they're going to be talking about. Can you speak to what this is called the last mile reassembly attacks and what those are? Yes. So this attack is called the last mile reassembly attack. Uh, it basically plays around the, the architectural flaw in SWGs. So typically all the secure web gateways look at data at a network level and they don't have visibility around what is happening in a tab or in a mm -hmm. particular browser. 
So to simplify it, you know, let's say there are a lot of network requests happening. So if a secure web gateway is looking at those requests, it will not lo- know that this, this was actually coming from a particular tab in a browser window. Mm. And okay. this is the flaw which this attack is playing around. Wow. Wow. That's that's really interesting. Now, is there something about it's going to be able to bypass all the SWGs in the Gartner Magic Quadrant? What is that about? <laughs> that's, that's correct. That's correct. That's correct. So uh, since, you know, this is an architectural flaw, mm-hmm. uh, which sort of proves that SWGs, uh, although are like a great addition to your, uh, you know, your, your security system, uh, does not cover everything. And this basically shows that almost all the vendors in the Gartner uh, uh, in the the Carter matrix are sort of getting bypassed for this method. Wow, wow. So how does that, what does that mean for SDBGs going forward? What should organizations do if they're concerned now because of this being released? And should they be thinking their strategy around using SWGs? Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's nothing wrong in using SWGs because there is, there's a certain category of things that they do very well. Like, you know, they, since they look at data at the network level, a uh, lot of threats can actually be stopped at the network level itself. However, just having a SWG is not going to protect your organization. Mm. So you need to actually pair it up with some other solutions. Like traditionally, people have been using endpoint security solutions as well. So similar to that, there are certain category of attacks which can happen via browser as well. So your your, your whole system should not just have an SWG, but it should also have a browser-based uh, you know, security solution and also an endpoint security solution. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And then also as part of uh, that talk, there's a new open source toolkit for red teams that's also being released. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, sure, sure. So what we are releasing is not just this attack, but we're also releasing a toolkit, which is also called the last mile reassembly toolkit. And what it does is that it, it basically allows you to run this whole framework, the, 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 you know, the whole set of attacks that we have made uh, within your network. And you can actually try it out. Uh, in your network and see whether your current security system is able to mm. uh, handle these particular ways through which we are actually delivering a malicious file or a malicious website. That's great. I am a huge fan of people releasing open source tooling or code. I think it's so important that that gets out to the community to see yes. if their systems are vulnerable or how they can be leveraged to hopefully stay ahead of the attacker. Yeah. One thing that always comes up though, and I'm interested in your opinion, is there's also some People think there's a, it's a negative thing if uh, a company like SquareX and others release open source tooling or codes because it gives the attacker a benefit. What's your thoughts on that kind of feedback? I think you know, uh, since this, this, these, these tools are released as open source, so the whole purpose of making them open source and free is to make sure that it's highly available to you know all the organizations at the same time. It's more about how fast they act on this. So if they're able to act fast on this, uh, it's, I think, a great opportunity for them to make sure like, you know, these attacks are covered in as well. People can say it as a double-edged sword, but mm-hmm. I would say that, you know, at the same time, it gives them a big advantage uh, over the attackers for, you know, protection against any kind of similar attacks happening in the future. Yeah, yeah. And that and that's really the message that I think we need to continue to spread in the security community because Absolutely. it is it's the same thing when we see exploit code being released by a researcher and someone's the attackers are going to the attackers probably already have the exploit code and exactly, <laughs> they're already exactly. using it. So the good guys need it too. Yeah. We're going to have all of this linked in our show notes uh, for this episode. So where to find uh, the toolkit, um, links to uh, Vivek and Jeswin's talk um, and all of that available for our listeners. So uh, definitely check that out. Um, do you have plans for the rest of uh, Black Hat? Are you staying for DEF CON? Yeah, yeah. I'm staying for DEF CON yep. as well. Awesome. Great, great. So uh, hopefully you enjoy your time here in... Uh, hot las vegas <laughs> it's ridiculously hot here um, but it was really great speaking with you and i wish you the best here as you in las vegas thank you so much it was great talking to you thanks for watching or listening to this episode be sure to subscribe wherever you like to listen to podcasts follow us on x at shared sec and help support the podcast by joining our patreon to get ad-free episodes bonus content, and many more exclusive supporter-only benefits. Visit sharedsecurity.net slash supporter for more details.